gamers, we are about to play some Imperial Settlers. And for those of you who watched my playthrough of 51st State uh, about a week ago, um, you will uh, recognize a lot, of the a lot of the mechanics from this game because Imperial Settlers is basically like a descendant of 51st State. Um, it also comes with a solo mode that is pretty similar with some striking similarity, so striking differences that we're going to talk about. Um, I would actually say that the solo for Imperial Settlers is a tighter game. So what we're going to be playing for this video is just one game of the basic solo mode, which is great for getting to know how each of the different factions work. Um, today we'll be playing the Romans because I'm a Latin teacher and I can't not play the Romans. <laughs> um, but there are other factions, including two expansion factions, that have slightly different powers and balances and strategies. So this game has a lot of depth to it if you want to learn how to play as multiple different civilizations. Um, it also has a campaign mode. Um, it's actually linked to in the written review of this game on my blog, and I highly, highly, highly recommend doing campaign mode if you think you want to really play this game solo. So one of the major differences in the solo version of Imperial Settlers, especially as compared to 51st State, is that in 51st State we were racing the AI player to a certain number of victory points before we could stop and count up our total score. Um, in Imperial Settlers there are always five rounds, and basically our goal this time is to produce more faction locations in our tableau than the AI player has common locations that they acquire throughout the game. So just for reference, the, you are working with multiple decks in this game. So this is the common location deck. It's got a blue back. I actually also have a special Roman faction deck that I'm going to be using um, to build faction locations with throughout the game. So basically at the end of five rounds, we'll see how many locations they have, how many faction locations I have. I can build faction locations here and common locations over here. And if I have more of my faction's locations than they have locations total, then we'll win. Otherwise, we lose, regardless of how many victory points I have. So to start off the game, I'm going to get an opening hand of four cards. I can draw two cards off the common deck and two cards off of my faction deck. And as you can see, the um, faction cards and the common cards have slightly different features. So common cards can be raised for their goods, or they can be built as locations. So I pay to build, or I can use a sword aggression token to raise it and take these items. Faction locations don't have any raise value, but they do allow you to make a deal. So I can basically pay one food in this game to make a deal and produce a stone every turn from here on out, if this is a location that I choose to make a deal with. Otherwise, I can just build it over here for its either production, feature, or action. Um, purposes. So that's my opening hand. We'll see how it goes. Oh, another notable thing, by the way, that you should see is that see how you have to pay to build and it has two stones and a little house? That stands for a common location. So I need to build common locations and then destroy them to create raw material, basically, for my faction locations. So let's play the first round of this game and see how I do. So I already have my opening hand, but now that it's the first round, I get to draw one more faction card. Nice. And then we're going to have a drafting phase that's a little bit like the one in 51st State. So we're going to pull four cards off the top of the common deck. And what's going to happen is that by the end of this, I'm going to get two and they're going to get two. But let's figure out which ones I want. Hmm. So I'm not going to be producing a whole lot of workers early on, so I'm going to stick with this production and just grab this production card. Now I'm going to shuffle these three up. And okay, so my enemy is going to get this Mason's Guild location. Let's see what else I have. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one where I can spend a person to draw a card. So they'll get spend uh, a worker and a gold to gain two victory points, but it won't really matter for them since they don't take actions. So what's interesting about my opponent's cards over here is that um, at the end of this round, they're permanently gonna go into my opponent's location deck. So if I'm gonna do anything about raising their locations, I'm gonna have to do it now before this round is out. So a lot of this game is about 
being quick about gaining the power to do that so you can cut locations away from your opponent while you're building more and more and more of your own faction locations. So, now that they have some cards, what we're gonna do is this. We are gonna start this game. Oh, and the other thing, by the way, over here, this is an attack deck that we're going to talk about at the end of the round. So after I've played out my round, the um, opponent is going to try to raise or tear down different locations that I've built, and this deck determines the way in which that is done. So we are gonna talk about that as we go. But for now, let's have a look at our cards and see what we can do. So the first step of any full round after drafting is production. So right now, since I haven't built any locations that are gonna produce for me, um, I'm going to basically only get the production resources that are here. So that means that I get two workers, I get one sword, which is like a raising token. So I can pay one token to raise a card of mine. I need two in order to raise one of theirs. So one thing I'll need to be thinking about is how to get more of these. If I have extra, I can store them here, which is pretty cool. It's one of the good things about being Rome. I don't really need a shield because you can't shield things in the solo version of the game. This would be to protect a location from an, a human opponent in the multiplayer game. Um, I get one wood and one stone. And so that is what I get. Let's see what I can turn it into in this game. Okay, so building locations is the main priority of the game, um, especially faction locations. So let's see. I have these three faction locations right now, um, but I need to build some common locations in order to make them happen. So let's see. I think what I'm gonna do first, is I want to do something that's like a production location. That seems smart. So, here's what I will do. I am going to pay, and let's just move these out of the way for a second. We'll put them here. Um, I'm gonna pay one wood, and one stone to build this quarry. So one of the cool things about building in this game is that you immediately get the production, what you would get if you were at the beginning of the round. And in this case, I'm gonna get a building bonus. So I'm gonna get two stones back for that. And that's good for me because that means that I can actually build off of the, that card to do something else. So what I think I might like to do in this particular case, yeah, okay, so let's do this. What I wanna do is I'm actually immediately going to destroy this location. Um, I am going to um, pay one stone and one card, so this will go in the discard, to build a gladiator school. So I will get an action and it's spend one worker to gain one aggression token. So I can give up one of these guys for a sword that I can use to mess with someone else, which is a pretty good deal if you ask me. So now let's think about what to do next. Um, I have this raise token, and now that I have a gladiator school, I can try to spend one worker to get another one and then take out one of the enemy locations. But I also want to work on getting my own locations out there because really the goal is to make sure that I have more over here than they have in their deck. And that's gonna be what I really need to be focusing on is building. So let's see if there's anything I can do to build more stuff. Why in fact there is. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spin this raise token to raise this card. So I'm gonna claim two wood from the raise value on that card. Ta-da, two wood. Now I can spin those two, pay to build, this production card. And from that production, I'm going to get two more pieces of wood. Amazing. Then I'm actually going to be able to pay to build another location because I have a wood and a stone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then since I have these two workers left, you can spend two to gain any one resource. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna spend these two workers to get a food. 
And I'm gonna use that food in probably this location, I think. Yeah, let's just go for that. So I'll spin the food and raise this location to build my legion. And so what this means is that I'm producing one common card each turn from now on. So I'm gonna draw one common card now and then I actually get to draw another one as my building bonus. So my hand just got bigger again. And it's a good thing that I'm hoping to produce some wood next turn as long as they don't destroy it because check it out, I'm gonna need it to build some more stuff that I can raise to make more faction locations. So I think that's really about all I can do for this turn. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get rid of this piece of wood because I can't store it, it doesn't do anything for me. So now it is time for the virtual opponent to attack. So we're gonna talk about how that works. So see this symbol up here? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another card and basically if I have a common location with the same products, as its raise bonus, then it will be destroyed. Fortunately, this has a card on it. This does not have a card on it. So I don't even have to worry from this point. This attack failed because it was a card. If I'd had um, another location that had a card, I would then go to this gold and see if that also matched. And if, it do if I don't have a complete match, nothing gets destroyed. If, however, the virtual opponent does manage to destroy something, they take that location and add it to their location pile so it actually scores against me at the end of the game. So they attack twice, so here's our second attack. It has a worker. So in other words, the opponent completely failed to hit me this time, and we can move on to another round unscathed. Um, however, I can't attack these locations anymore. These are now permanently in the virtual opponent's location deck. So we're just gonna put it Let's put it over here for now. So we'll just know that it's there. So that was round one. Now we'll move on to round two and we'll see how it goes.